Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Let's Get Loud podcast. This is a solo podcast episode with a, oh, I actually, oh, there we go. There we go. I can see my notes at the same time. Okay, guys. First of all, hi. It's been a while since I've come to see you guys because I batch recorded some um, because I was going to Hawaii. So it was incredible. What an amazing trip. Check, check, check. Also really great to be home. Um, Yeah. So I'm home now. And we're switching our focus and I want to bring you guys along the ride with me. So if you, oh, before I get going, I want to say, I've had a few messages from you guys, DMs in my Instagram, just to say like, you know, I listened to your solo podcast episode. I love it. I'm enjoying it. Can you talk about this? And I really am enjoying those DMs. So if you listen to this and you enjoy it, send me a DM. Let me know what topics you want to hear covered. It doesn't need to be weight loss. We can talk about all the things. I am an open book. Okay. Okay. So, uh, since I got home, okay, here's what happened when I was away. Okay. Wait, let's go back to birth. (laughs) It's not really birth, but let's go back to a little bit real quick. My journey, uh, my weight loss journey. So I had struggled with my relationship with food. My entire life was uh, binge eating a binge eater. I didn't really identify with that label. It's not until as an adult that I'm really looking back and reflecting. I'm like, wow, I was a binge eater. Uh, I would completely, I, I, I would define that with a complete loss of control around food often. And, but I never struggled with my weight until university because I was active. I was young. I didn't maybe have access to it all the time, but then I had the freedom of university, went away to summer camp every summer. And I would gain so much weight every summer because it was basically buffet style chicken nuggets on tap all the time. Yeah. And so I really then started to struggle with my weight and then started my dieting. So I did all the diets, Atkins, Weight Watchers, calorie counting. I don't know. I think my, my best friend and I in high school made up like a popsicle diet where we basically only ate popsicles until dinner time. Yeah. Anyway, so was gaining, losing 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds over and over and over. Lost a bunch of weight for my wedding. I was doing Weight Watchers at the time was just dieting hard. I don't even know if I was actually counting points, to be honest. I would, but I was, you know what I was using Weight Watchers for? Was that like community feel. I would go every Saturday and get weighed and stay for the meeting. Fun fact, Jose was the leader at Weight Watchers at that time. I lost 80 pounds, I think, for my wedding and I gained it all back before I left the resort. Like it was so not sustainable. It was so all just for how I was going to look in my dress. And then I started my fertility journey and I wasn't really focused on weight loss. So now we're at the point where I've been watching Jose open this business. I did not think this podcast was going to go this far back, but here we are guys. I'm going to get to some good stuff. If you're listening to this, you're like, we know this story, Alicia, I'm getting there. Okay. So I'm watching Jose start this business. She decides that Weight Watchers is not aligning with her beliefs and she knows she has a lot to offer and she wants to help people lose weight her way. So she starts this business. I'm busy at my, at that time, you know, having babies. And finally the twins are one. And I say to her, like, like I'm ready, like, let's do this. And it was a, it was a October moment that I felt like really, I remember this moment going to an event and just feeling so uncomfortable in my skin. And that was like my moment where I was like, nope, refuse to live this way. And I deep down felt like I wasn't living to my full potential. And so that year I lost 50 pounds, opened up a year weight loss in Riverview um, uh, in January of the next year, lost another 20 pounds. And I've been maintaining plus or minus that 10 pounds for the last like five years. So when you're maintaining, it's not like you're staying at like 160, 160, 160, you're going 162, 163, you know, back to 162 and you're kind of like going like this. Well, over the last two years, I've gained about five pounds. Not a big deal. I am not a bad person. I haven't failed. I just gained five five pounds over the last two years. What was the reason why? Is it because I turned 40 and the flicks switched? Is it because, well, no, I'll tell you why. It's because on average, I was in a small surplus for the last two years. So when I was in Hawaii, I just had that nagging feeling again. And I was like, you know what? You were not fully comfortable in your skin and you deserve that. You know, I lived so much of my adult life feeling so uncomfortable in my skin that I was like, let's do this. So when I got home, I thought, all right, I'm going to lose weight, but I, how can I help people understand 
how I use mindfulness as my tool, my main tool for weight loss. And I just thought, what a better way to really bring them along the ride with me and just really share with them and show them what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, how I'm thinking. Okay. So I came home, literally got home Tuesday night at let's say 8 PM. And I started my mindful fat loss phase on the Wednesday morning. Yes, you can start weight loss on a Wednesday. And so I declared that I was going to do the following things for 30 days. So I'm going to take you guys along the ride. First of all, before you do this, you need to understand calorie deficit. So if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I'd like to do this with her. Actually, I created a little document to explain exactly what I'm doing. I have some links in there for supporting videos, some supporting documents. Um, so if you guys are interested in following along with me, totally free, I'll put the link in um, the show notes. And you guys can grab that and get that sent right to your email. So first of all, once you understand calorie deficit, I know that all I need to do when I'm creating a fat loss is to create a calorie deficit. So I'm in charge of how I do that. So it does not need to look a certain way. Check. Okay. So then what I'm doing is, and if you're following along with me, I'm going to ask that you do the same thing. I'm going to ask that you reflect and set intentions every single day, because that's what I'm using as my main tool is being in, being connected to my actions, asking myself what worked, what didn't work, why I'm making the choices I'm making. If it did work, what did I do that, you know, facilitated that? If it didn't work, what could I do different next time? So I'm using mindfulness as my main tool. So I need to set intentions and reflect every single day. So this morning I sat down with a piece of paper and I reflected on yesterday and then I set intentions for today. Pretty simple, 30 days, okay? I also attached to that, I have four extra goals that I'm attaching onto that um, and I'm tracking it all in, I don't have my page near me. Um, yes, I do. I track, well, if you guys are watching on YouTube, I'm tracking it all on a monthly habit tracker, which is also in that uh, email that I created. So you guys can print it yourself. And so I'm simply tracking water. I just, everything is better when I consume more water, creating portion awareness. So measuring my creamer, measuring my uh, meat measuring my sauce, my peanut butter, my jam, all the things that are quite easy for me to consume extra and not really realize. So portion awareness, I must say though, this is not something I'm doing all the time. It's just when this is easy, why not take advantage of it? So if I'm at someone's house and they offer me a coffee, I'm not going to be like, oh wait, please, can you measure the tablespoons in my coffee? I'm just going to drink the coffee, right? So I'm just, wait, but I work from home. I'm at home most of the time. Now, this is my environment. You all have a different environment. So really ask yourself within my own environment, where would it be easy for me to create portion awareness? So really for me from breakfast to supper is super easy. Dinner time, I tend to not be as portion aware. I could, but I just find it's more challenging because I'm like, you know, feeding the family. I'm plating things up. It's just not as much of a priority and it's not necessary. I don't need to do it all the time, but I'm doing it when it's easy. All right. Next thing is I am going to be mindful of my food. Okay. What does this look like? So I wrote down at the beginning that I was just going to be mindful with my food choices, but then I was like, oh, that's so broad. How do I define mindfulness? And I am so far away from being mindful right now when I'm eating that I'm going to start with I'm eating while sitting. Pretty simple. Did you only consume food while sitting? Because right now, 97% of my food is on the run which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I'll tell you, if I was to identify the amount of times that I am consuming food, that's, if I look back, not worth it to me, not a part of my meal. So for example, like the bite of the kids, mashed potatoes, or like the shots of chocolate chips in the pantry, you know, a, a thing of crackers, all of those things are happening while standing. So if I can it's not that standing is a trigger to me, but standing is a part of the habit. And so if I can just simply take the moment to sit and it kind of snaps me back into it. Like yesterday I was eating chocolate bar, um, which is fine. I can eat chocolate, but I reminded myself, you actually set a goal to sit down. So I grab my chocolate bar. I sit down, I unwrap it. I eat it. If I want another chocolate bar. It's like the mini ones. I have to get back up. It just is a little bit more effort to keep eating. 
So anyways, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to just eat sitting. And that is difficult, actually. I just had a bite of a protein cookie and I was like, shit, I wasn't sitting. And it, I, I'm, I'm so far removed from it that I sometimes don't even consider it. So that's a big one for me. So once I feel like I'm getting better at that, I might add something on. I might say no distractions while you're eating. So no cell phones. Oh, that'd be hard for me. Okay. So the next thing is I'm going to weigh myself every day. Okay. So I had, I have had several talks on social media about scale, and I'm not going to use this time to really dig deep into it, but, you know, just understanding those daily fluctuations is so powerful. You can understand your body more. You can see what's up, see what's happening. But at the end of the day, do you know what I'm looking for? I'm not looking for the Wednesday to Wednesday. I lost 1.6 pounds. I'm looking for is the trend of the scale going down. And when I collect data every single day, I feel like I have more accurate data. So is the trend of the scale going down is the question that I'm asking myself. Okay. So I do want to update you guys. We're a week in already. It's going so well, tons of room for improvement. Like I'm not like nailing my days. It's not like, I don't think I've had one perfect day yet. Oh, okay. No big deal. I haven't failed. It just shows me that I'm, these are worth me working on. So I lost, if we're doing a week at a time, we're doing 0.8. So I lost 0.8. Now, I would have been a little disappointed if I hadn't weighed myself every day and seen that I actually had been way lower two days before. And I know 0.8 is a very reasonable amount of weight to lose in one week, but I had just gotten off an airplane from Hawaii. So I would have thought that it would have been down quite a bit more, but the trend in the scale is going down. That's good. Even if I've only lost 0.8, that's telling me what I'm doing is creating a small calorie deficit and for me to keep going. And do you know what else is telling me to keep going? I don't feel deprived. I don't feel like I'm on a diet. All of the things I've written down are aligning with who I want to be as a person. And so that's telling me this, this is what I need to be working on right now. And so I will continue to work on this. I will continue to share with you guys. I've actually been updating social media pretty much every single day. So if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about the mindful fat loss journey, go check out the Your Way Weight Loss Instagram or even the sneak peek group on Your Way Weight Loss. I've been going and doing almost a daily live updating you guys. There was a full debrief on the scale yesterday. So I think today I should go in there and talk about weekends. Dun, dun, dun. So my relationship with weekends is amazing. I don't see it as any different day or a, a need to consume extra energy just because it's Saturday. I don't feel that way. That's not how I live my life. I live my life, you know, consuming more energy on days where I'm more hungry and or there's organic social events. And this weekend is a perfect example of there's really nothing going on. So perfect. I can take advantage of that um, and just really go for it and, you know, create that, continue with my momentum, momentum, create that calorie deficit. And next week I am going to come back and update you guys again. So I want you to send me a DM and tell me what specifically do you want to talk about? Do you have any questions about my fat loss journey? Are you confused? Is there a, yeah, but are you wondering, but how how will you know how many calories you're consuming? Cause you're not counting. I'm not counting calories. I'm not following a meal plan. I'm not restricting certain foods. Oh, do you know what else is happening? I'm not moving my body right now. Next week, I think I'll be ready to start doing something. But if you guys saw, I am struggling with my foot. So this has been a recurring injury for me for a couple of years now, unfortunately. And I'm finally going down the path of figuring it out. So I did have an x-ray two years ago that showed nothing. I have an incredible friend who's an orthopedic surgeon who saw me and it's very specifically a joint. So there's a joint in my foot that is an agonizing pain. So when he touches it, it's like, <gasps> and at night it throbs. And obviously when I move my body, it's, um, it hurts it even more. So I'm just staying off it for now, just kind of digesting and thinking and figuring it out. And I'm going to have to move my body in a different way than walking, which is not going to lie devastating. It doesn't mean I can't ever walk again. Uh, he thinks it might be arthritis, but it is kind of stumping him a little bit because it's not really presenting itself like normal arthritis. It's just one joint. 
And, um, it's like not, doesn't hurt me in the morning anyways. So more to come on that. I'll keep you guys updated. But the reason why I mention it is because someone asked me like, can you talk specifically about, you know, your lack of movement and this weight loss journey? So here's the thing. It didn't, it wasn't even a thing in my brain. I know that I can create a calorie deficit without movement. Did you hear me? You do not need to exercise to lose weight. And honestly, my movement, my walks were more about my mental health than anything and my physical health than weight loss. Like I want to be the grandma that's still moving their body at 80. And so if I want to be that person, I need to be that person at 40. And so that's what motivated me more than anything. And it just felt so good. The fresh air, oh, I'm getting sad thinking about it. But it's, I, so basically I just, I didn't make it a thing. And I just said to myself, I, I accepted it. And maybe you're struggling. You have an injury. You can't move your body or you don't want to move your body. And you're struggling to get past it when it comes to weight loss. Well, we need to work on that mindset and you need to look, seek out evidence of people that have lost weight without uh, movement. And you need to ask yourself, do I really believe that it's possible? And if the answer is no, you need to go work on that and figure that out. If the answer is yes, then you need to remind yourself of that every single day. Because what can happen is we get stuck in the like black or white mentality. Well, my, no point in trying to lose weight right now because I can't exercise. That's bullshit. That's a limiting belief. That's holding you back from your success. And so I'm so far gone in my mindset when it comes to movement that that didn't even occur to me. And I also really don't like to live my life in a victim mentality. I do not. And so as much as this is shitty, as much as this sucks, as much as this is frustrating, I'm refusing to spend my mental energy on those emotions. And I'm looking towards right now, things are just on hold. I'm letting it heal getting my life back together after Hawaii. But next week, I'll be ready to like consider other things, flirt with other things. So I'm moving from the victim mentality, sorry for me, this sucks, to solution oriented. And that's the way my brain works. And that's the way that I like to live my life because I just want to live my life to my full potential and staying stuck in the, oh, woe is me is just not gonna get me there. So that's how I'm doing it without movement. I'm just doing it without movement. Obviously that will impact maybe the rate of my weight loss. If I was eating the exact same thing and also moving my body, I would absolutely be losing weight faster. However, because I'm not moving my body, I'm not as hungry. So because I'm living my life where I'm staying in touch with my hunger, I'm not like eating less because I'm not moving my body. I didn't have to do any adjustments. I just live my life where I'm in tune with my hunger. And so I'm listening to my hunger. I'm listening to my body. And so I'm organically consuming less energy because I'm not as hungry because I'm not moving my body right now. All right. Now you guys know everything. You're fully up to date. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any clarifying questions, if there's anything you want to know more about, anything that piqued your interest, please send me a message and I'll write it down for the topic for tomorrow's solo podcast episode. Okay, everyone, I appreciate you tuning in so much. It is not lost on me that like you spending some time listening to me talk about me. I am really, really appreciate, appreciative of that. All right, everyone have an incredible weekend. And if you want to talk a little bit more about weekends and weight loss, go see me in the sneak peek. I'm going to go live right now in the sneak peek and discuss that. Okay, everyone. Bye.